Welcome to the Wetform Android Quick Tour. In this Quick Tour, I will just give you a very brief outline of the capabilities of Wetform Android, and there is a more detailed uh, tour of the capabilities in a separate video. Now, remember that Wetform Android is actually meant as a data collection tool to be used in conjunction with Wetform Desktop. Right here we have Wetform Desktop, which has a lot of uh, capabilities that the data collector doesn't, such as printing and sorting your data, importing and exporting your data, backing it up. It allows you to view the photos that you've attached to the different uh, uh, samples and such. So let's get back to Wetform Android. I'll get that started. Now what you're observing this on is a Samsung Galaxy Tab 2 7-inch screen in a vertical format. You can also use the horizontal format, which I tend to like when I'm doing a lot of uh, thumb typing on the keyboard. But we'll just start like this. So this is the project screen and has all of the required Corps of Engineers data fields that need to be entered. And down the lower left here we have the main menu. And we can see we have a, a project category veg, hydrology, soils, determination, which will summarize the results of the vegetation, hydrology, and soils data collection, view, which allows you to navigate to all the different records, and then help. Help provides information on these different topics and, and uh, categories, and also includes, and I'll go ahead and go there, the Atlantic Gulf Coast Manual in its entirety. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up, and you can see here are all the different chapters to the Atlantic Gulf Coast uh, Corps of Engineers Wetland Delineation Manual. And I'm, as an example, I'm going to go to the Soil S uh, category, and uh, we've got the striped matrix that I'm going to go to. And we can see that we not only do we have descriptions, but we also have the images that were produced with the Atlantic Gulf Coast Manual. So let me backtrack from that back to the main project menu. And we'll start with the project. We can see that we have all these options. Add a record, clone a record, delete record, uh, delete all records. GPS allows us to connect to either a built-in GPS or an external Bluetooth GPS. Photos allows us to connect to collect information about our photos or we can add comments. And when we collect GPS information, that first coordinate is attached to the first photo in the photo section. Import CSV will let us import data from the desktop version of Wetform and export CSV will allow us to export our data to the desktop. And I'll return once again briefly to the desktop and if we go to the data tools tab and we scroll down here is the export import PDA data data options so it's a simple button click to either import or export data. And a clone record. We're going to start with that. Clone record will replicate all of the project screen data. Uh, so it's very handy when you're collecting say an upland and a wetland soil pit pair. It will allow you to not have to replicate all this data uh, but it doesn't replicate the vegetation, hydrology, and soils data. So note that we're on record uh, 16, plot P16, and I'm going to go ahead and hit clone record. And notice that we're now on record 17. And so now all of these data have been replicated and I don't have to redo them. Also notice down here that I can enter slope either as a degree or a percent and it automatically translates back and forth. And then you can see that the, G, the uh, GPS lat long data have also been replicated. So now let's move on to some of these other options. We'll start with veg. And what I'm going to do is uh, first demonstrate how one uh, species is entered using the lookup screen, so we'll go to an empty tree stratum. What you do is you tap in this box below where it says uh, species tap. Yellow equals dominant means that when the cover value is entered, 
uh, it'll automatically calculate whether or not there's a dominant and turn the background on that species yellow. So it's usually best to enter two, maybe three letters before you do your search and it'll filter the entire list of over 13,000 species down rather quickly. And what you can see is you've got two columns here, spe name and scientific name. The left column includes accepted and synonyms. The right column shows the names that are the accepted names. So right here you can see that we have Sabatia recurvans is a synonym for Sabatia macrophylla very variety recurvans. So I'm going to go ahead and collect that, connect, uh, click that, select it, enter a cover value, to start with three, I tap next and that'll just bring me down to the next box and you have to click away from that box for the calculations to be done and you can see that the background on that species is turned yellow because it's a dominant. So what I'm going to do very quickly is tap in the box line number two species and demonstrate that we can use common species, common names of species and once again I'll just enter in a couple of letters You can see we've got our common name and then the scientific name next to it. And we also have the synonyms over on the right and you can see the indicator status. So let's say I want to get an obligate species here. Select it. And we'll give it a 5. And I'll tap next. So what we've got right now, and I'll clear the screen, so we have uh, two dominants, and you can see down here all the dominance and prevalence calculations have been done. And we've got all the calculations. So at this point we know we've got prevalence, but we don't have dominance. So I'm going to go ahead and close that. And notice that when we open up the menu from here, we have quick access to the different strata. But I'm going to go ahead and close that, because they all work similarly. And then we'll go to the hydrology. Now notice on the hydrology we've got all the standard checkboxes. We have the secondaries and we also have fact neutral. Now fact neutral will be automatically checked if there are more wetter than fact species than drier than fact species. And when there's a tie the user is supposed to consider non-dominant. So notice that the fact neutral has not been checked. Let's go ahead and close this. Go back to the species, or go back to the vid screen. Go back to the tree stratum. And let's add one more species to watch that calculation and see how it works. So what we need is a wetter than fact species to be added. So let's go ahead and uh, add an obligate select it. We'll uh, make sure that it also is a dominant. Click Next. So we've got three dominants now. I'm going to close this. Go to the hydrology screen. Scroll down and notice that the fact neutral test has been checked. So all those different calculations that have to be done uh, are automatically done. So now that we see we've got one item checked on the secondaries because of the fact neutral, let's go ahead and click another fact neutral, or not another fact neutral, another secondary. Close this. Let's make a quick look at the determination screen. So you can see that we have the vegetation is hydric, the hydrology is wetland, and uh, the other uh, soils isn't. So it's not fully a wetland yet. Let's close this. So let's go to the soils. Now soils has both a checkbox section and a horizon section. So uh, let's quickly go to the checkbox section. And just as you expected, it's got the basic uh, checkboxes, including problematic. Now just to kind of verify that the logic is working properly, let's click problematic. Now soils would not be considered hydric unless vegetation and hydrology were already uh, considered hydric. 
The other thing I want to show you are these yellow boxes will take you to information about what the soils are associated with because they tend to be the more difficult to interpret. So you've got your quick access to the Corps of Engineers manual there. So let's go ahead and close that. And just to verify that uh, the logic is working, let's go to determination. And can, you can see that the hydric, even though it was problematic, was accepted as a hydric soil because the vegetation and hydrology were also wetland. So now let's do look at the uh, soil horizons. And we have a lot of drop down boxes here that give you very quick uh, ability to fill these in. So the first horizon will be zero to some value. We have all our matrix values that can be entered. And you can enter additional values besides just the ones that are in your drop down box so you aren't limited to those. And then automatically calculated, since we know the first uh, horizon uh, was at 8 inches. We know the next one's going to be 8 or some higher values. So that's automatically calculated. And if your first horizon had models, you can click the plus models and that will be associated with uh, that first horizon. So we've got that, those different uh, abilities to speed up the soil data collection. Go ahead and hit close. And we've got our determination screen that we've already looked at. And view just allows us to navigate the first, last, next, previous. And then go to will show us all of the samples uh, sorted by project site as well as sorted by plot ID. So we've got two different projects going here. And uh, if I go to 6, it'll immediately take me to sample 6. And I'll be able to reevaluate that and compare. So let's see, I think that about uh, concludes the tour. Uh, I want to thank you for your time. And if you have any questions, uh, feel free to give me a call. And uh, happy sampling.